Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Vacation Station Travel and Leisure Show. Welcome, everybody. You know, uh, it is Hey, Wanna Go Travel Wednesday here on Big Blend Radio's Vacation Station show. And that means we get to talk with Cheryl Ogle, who is a world traveler, a travel advisor, and owner of the travel company Hey, Wanna Go. And she specializes in travel to Europe, the UK, river and ocean cruises, and Hawaii. So she is here every third Wednesday. And today we're going to talk about how to keep your energy up in regards to travel because you can get burned out. Travel can be tiring. Sometimes you get home and it's like, I need a week on the couch. Um, But, you know, that's not normally a possibility for all of us. So um, we're going to talk about that. And um, as always, I know we're going to talk about cake. So um, everyone, you can go to (laughs) heywannago.com. And Cheryl's got a blog on there. And as always, I put that in the episode description. So welcome back, Cheryl. Hey, want to go? Good to be here. Hey, want to go get a slice of cake? Hey, want to (laughs) go? Always. Okay. Okay. So, <gasps> no, okay. No. What, what is the best last cake that you had on a trip that you can think of? Oh man. I don't know. That means it's probably been too long, huh? Oh, you've been good girl. Oh, oh I don't wow. know that I've been good, but I haven't had any notable cake lately. So mm. it's time for, maybe I have to go get a cupcake after lunch or something. I have got a giant cinnamon with like caramel, uh, little chips in it muffin which is almost like cake but it's not quite the same as cake but that's cake I know and so you know and we have to give us a shout out because you know we're in North Carolina today as we record and Nancy and I drove by like one of the original crispy cream donuts yesterday so did we get a point for that if you drove by it, sure, sure, you get a point. So I would like to start out with this. Like when we drive, I eat a lot of gummy bears and, and things I should not eat. I want my my sugar. But here's a burnout thing. You will burn out if you have too much sugar. You will come crashing down. So don't do what I do. <laughs> Just saying. Right. So there's my first I, I had a road trip over the weekend and did the same. I bought some Red Hots because I love Red Hots. Oh, yes. And, um, and what I did was I mixed them with lemon heads. Um, just to put in my little cup holder. And so I'd pick up something you never really knew what you were going to get. Not a good combination, but, and I didn't finish them. Um, but still after a while, it was like, yeah, yeah, I don't want any more sugar. I felt like my teeth were rotting. So yeah, I know. Right. They they start to bend and get wonky, but yeah. So there's the first tip, man. We have, I just thought I'd start because somehow we always managed to get into that, um, on this show, but I just thought I'd start off with that because you know, don't snack on sugar. It's, it's, it's a bad combination. So yeah, I did trail mix for the rest of it. So yeah. yeah, trail mix is good because you can have peanuts, you can have nuts for protein and a little bit of M&Ms is not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's okay. a better, better option for sure. So, okay. So that's the first thing, <laughs> but travel burnout is real. I think, especially traveling overseas and um, a lot of people, it, can we just go to the fact that a lot of people are, are we've changed our business life, right? So a lot right. of people are work remotely mm-hmm. and then it's like, oh, I can work from anywhere. But then you start trying to do business and travel at the same time. And yes. can that be one of the hardest things? Because I know you balance that too, is balance. Yes. I mean, so do we. But I think um, vacation, you can allow yourself to sleep in. But if you still have to do that Zoom call, hi. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you're battling different time zones, all of that, it, that could burn you out a little. It really does because now that, you know, so many, I I've always worked remotely, but for some it's, it's a really new concept. And so you can work from anywhere. You can be at the grocery store in the middle of the day and still answering emails and you're still productive. So you're not doing anything wrong, but when you take that on vacation, um, you still are trying to pack all that in, in addition to eight hours of vacation a day, um, or, or whatever that looks like. And so that that can be hard because those are additional hours that maybe you shouldn't be spending. And so mm. I consider it a huge blessing to be able to travel and continue to work. But at the same time, there are times that I will go, go, go all day and then go out to dinner with friends or, you know, with a group tour group or whatever, and then go back to my cruise cabin or my hotel room at eight or nine that night. And then I sit down and I have to really get serious. I Maybe I've done things on my phone all day, but now I have to get serious about opening the computer and really, really working for three or four or five hours. I'm going to bed at one o'clock and then you get up the next morning and do it all over again. So 
it, it is, it's a catch 22. And I, I really, it's a great, great option, but it's exhausting. And so even after just doing a month of that, I've come home, I still haven't finished unpacking. I've unpacked the clothes and washed and ironed and put them away, but um, the rest of the stuff, the receipts, and I'm still missing some souvenirs because I know they're somewhere in there. Um, you know, the rest of the suitcases need to be emptied. And I haven't had the time because I'm immediately back to work, you know, real work on the computer all day. So really find that balance. Do you, can you, can you take true holiday or vacation time and just travel? Or do you have to, you know, do you have to work? Could it just be an emergency case? So um, pay attention to that. What, what's really necessary? Because I think that when you're, when you're packing in too much, whether it's all travel related or a full day of work at the, in the evenings, it's too much. And maybe you're not going to enjoy the area as much as you could. Yeah, well, I've, I've created little rules, you know, and boundaries, and it doesn't always work at all. Because right. I'm, I'm relying on technology. And, you know, we, we travel, we go off in the boonies and parks in the middle, and, you know, we're off. And, and then sometimes you're like, uh Oh, I, I really still have to do my social media posts, I still have to do this client email, you still have to do these certain things. But I try to scale back and go, okay, this is when Nancy and I are doing our park travel this is kind of our off grid time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I get, because I do so much and everything is so dead deadline oriented that when right. we have that, I just go, we're going from A to B and whatever the heck happens in between there, just let it be. If I want to sleep in till 10 in the morning, I can't, <laughs> but it's impossible for <laughs> What me. would that look like? <laughs> I, I, I can't, yeah. my body just won't do it. You know, thank God for coffee. Thank you. <laughs> it's going to happen but um you know coffee and wine balance themselves out with cake in between and pizza but but um it's better than pills i guess i've had to no no, no, i'm not into the pills but but the um you everybody works different and everyone's got a different career right so it's kind of looking at where can you cut back what can you do ahead of time so that you're also not burned out as you start your trip because you've been so stressed out going on the trip very, very good point. Have have those boundaries in place mm. and know what, what it needs to look like. Mm. So. Like for you, how do you balance that? I mean, I know you've got clients who you with oh, well. your, your travel business and you've got another things that you do. You have a right. lot of interests. You're like Nancy and I, it's like, oh, I'm interested in this. Oh, I mean, so you have to balance too. Right. I, I mean, I got my first job at 13. And other than when mm. I was pregnant and raising very young kids, I've not stopped working and I love working. My parents mm -hmm. taught me the value of a dollar and what it felt like to earn that dollar. We, we were not given dollars in, in yeah. our life. We, you know, we were provided for, but if we wanted extra money, we had to work for it. And I think it's a great lesson. So for me, I'm a little bit addicted to work and that's, that's not a healthy place to be <laughs> um, necessarily, but I like it. I, I do enjoy working. It feels good to be productive. I enjoy what I do. I've got the best jobs in the world. And so who can complain about that? Um, so anyway, but it, but it is time, you know, to make some shifts mm -hmm. and I love, I love my job. I love my travel job. I love sending people on their adventures, but I have certain things that I am more passionate about than others, um, other areas. And so I'm, I'm changing my business model a little bit to focus on those areas. And then when I get requests for areas that I just don't know as well, I work with colleagues who I trust and they, they know those, we can't all know the whole world and right. I will never know the whole world. So when people say, have you been everywhere? Have you been to Bulgaria? No, but it's on my list, but I'm not comfortable sending someone there when I have really no working knowledge of it. And, mm -hmm. um, I, I want to work with the working knowledge that I have. And right. I want to continue creating great trips to the British Isles. Like and if, if you're going to London, you better call Cheryl. I, lo I love anyone who knows me knows I love London. Mm -hmm. And um, that's my favorite city. And so I love I can get a request at 10 at night and I'm going to spend you know, two or three hours working on my custom itinerary for these people and go, oh, because you like this, you need to do this and this and this. I love London. So that really is the basis of my business. Mm -hmm. um, things that touch London. Um, escorted tour, group travel. So I'm not, I'm not quitting. I'm not doing anything like that, but I have to, I want to focus on the areas that I'm most passionate about. Well, that's, so. I think that's with everybody and, you know, in life and in business, 
you they always talk about doing something that is that you're passionate about and you love and you do a better job you're more successful and you're happier as an individual right and so that's in in life and i think that you know so many of us want to have this remote work situation there's mm-hmm. comes those days where you go okay i better start cutting back what do you cut back on you cut right. back on things that maybe aren't as joy factor for yourself right yeah. and that's in anything in life it is not just travel but we have to look at that also when we go on, on a vacation right mm-hmm. um i know you deal with a lot of people also going on business and you can do business and travel 100 percent. everyone i mean right. mm-hmm. we, we're here to, to prove that but right. um it's good to kind of understand okay what can i do so i can really go maybe you want to go see a play, right? And I'm going to use London. Uh, You want to go see that play? Well, no, like at this time, block it off your schedule. I am not around, you know, during that time, give yourself time beforehand to have dinner and maybe a restaurant, you know, create a whole experience where you know it's off bounds. I learned, um, you know, we interview many business coaches, consultants, life coaches, and I remember years ago on the show, one lady came on and she said, us women are the worst because we multitask and we have that, you know, let's do, let's do, let's do. And she said, really, you have to take time out for yourself. Even if you're a busy mom, she said, I don't care if you corner out a section in your closet for you just to go in your closet and sit in there away from kids and everything. Right. Even if it's half an hour, once every two or three days, you know that that is your time. And right. a lot of times, if we do not put it into our schedule, won't happen. <laughs> it will not happen. And you no. just pretend you're making an appointment with someone very important, the most important person to you, right. which right. is going to be who? Yeah. Yourself. Well, and it, you know, it's very true. And I was talking to one of my closest friends this morning and, you know, we've been trying to touch bases for the last two weeks and, and one of us would text, no, I've got this and this going on. How about Thursday at three? And it's like, why are we? And so we joked about how we're having to make an appointment. And, um, you know, I just told her I've, I've got time until, until 10 AM to chat this morning. And I thought I'm, I can delay my day and, and start a little bit later and I'll work this evening to make up for it. It was well worth it, but you get busy and you almost do have to make, make an appointment for things because I can look up and think, I haven't talked to any friends in three or four days or my parents or siblings. And um, in order to, to avoid burnout, I have to start scheduling in some things like that. You know, I love to sew and you know, my, my sewing machine now has an inch of dust on it. And I think I need to just put in, um, you know, an hour a week that I can go. sew. I I'm working Mm. on a big typing project and I need to schedule that to, so it's making little, little blocks of different things. Um, mm. it, it's just time, times, because I don't want to get to burnout. I, so, I don't want to do that. So for your clients, when they plan travel, um, as you know, we pet sit across the country. And so we're dealing with travelers all the time and also through the magazines. When people travel, what we see is a lot of times people are, especially couples, one has all of this. I want to go, go, go. The other one's like, dude, I've been go, go, going. I need to have my coffee in bed. This is my turn Thanks. to enjoy this in a luxury hotel or a cruise ship or whatever, mm-hmm. wherever it is. Mm-hmm. And so there can be a little, little, you know, yeah, a little chink in the happy factor. Right. Yeah. So when, when you talk to people that you're booking on, whether it's you know, a Viking cruise or river cruise or whatever it is, do you kind of go through their likes and interests and maybe say, Hey, it's okay to split up. Or maybe Mm -hmm. you do one thing that, you know, your partner's interested in, but you don't have to do all things that way and look at your time of, and have that balance because, you know, it's it's media. When we do a media trip, it's a fam tour. You are Mm -hmm. world around, twirled around so fast and it's a taste of the region, but we always ask, give us, an open block of time so we can go do our photography properly, go just to actually just walk down the street and get a sense of it. Like, Mm -hmm. do you do that with, with clients kind of say, Hey, have a block of time. Yes, absolutely. Do not try to fill every minute. And it's tempting because you think, Oh, I'm in Rome. I have to see every single thing. And yet you have no time to just sit at a cafe and have a cappuccino. And, um, you you have to schedule that or you will you'll be exhausted and I like getting exhausted on a trip I want to go 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 and see mm-hmm. things 
But I've learned too that I need some downtime and it can't always be just the eight hours or seven hours or five hours that I'm sleeping. I sometimes I want to sit and play words with friends, you know, not gonna not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm gonna play my little scrabble. Um, but I I encourage my clients to do that and to slow down so you can really soak in the area. Sit, just mm. sit, sit in the ca- local cafe, um, sleep in a little bit, or you'll be dragging. And when you're dragging, you're gonna end up, you know, you're vulnerable to be getting sick. So it, you, you really do have to pay attention to that. And there are times you don't, when I travel with, with friends, we don't have to be joined at the hip. You know, we joke about that. I, we don't have to do everything together. And so maybe I'll go, I, you know, on a a recent example was when I, I was in London and my friend wanted to go to um, Hampton Court Palace and I had already been. So she did that. And I went to a flower show. It was perfect. We got together again at the after, you know, in the afternoon at the hotel and had dinner together. And so we don't have to be together all the time and couples don't have to do that either. So mm. find, find some things to do together, but you may need some time alone and you yeah. may be in museums and he's not, or she's not, and you know, whatever. So that's yeah, okay. And then when you get together, you have something to discuss. Exactly. Compare and notes. Sure. And that, that's what's fun. I think really on cruise ships too, when you go as a group and that can be hard because, because as a group, you may have a big family group there and think, oh, we have to do every excursion together. Well, that can be exhausting and um, it's not always advisable. So it can be nice to go do your own things and then sit down at dinner, plan to have dinner every night together on the cruise. And then you can talk about what you did that day. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a combination that's worked really well for a lot of my clients. Yeah. You know, you just, just make time for each day to be together at one point, whatever Mm -hmm. it's breakfast, maybe it's a hike, who knows what it is on your excursion, but the Mm -hmm. excursions. Yeah. Cause when it gets too much, you also, if you don't give yourself breathing room, when things go on a detour, because we all know travel can be obstacle riddled and um, you need to have um, that breathing space to make a plan B, C or D, right? Exactly. Because it can be stressful. And when you have so much scheduled or you have things go wrong, that stress just compounds daily. And so give yourself, give yourself a break so you can all decompress some and play words with friends, whatever. Yeah, but, yeah you, you know, know, and that's, that's the thing. That How can you make air, air travel not so tedious? Because, you know, some people really hate it. And there's, if you book flights right on top of each other, can't that be an issue? Like, hey, yeah. do not, when you see flights and, and all the airlines do it because flights will change. And so you'll see, oh, I have 40 minutes in Phoenix. Well, that's not enough time because most airlines close their doors. Um, 15 minutes early before the flight time for a domestic flight and usually 30 minutes, sometimes more for, um, for long hauls. So don't, don't do tight connections. It is better to have, have four hours in Dallas than 55 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you get lucky and you're on time, you might make it, but if not, it, it is very, very stressful to then be rebooked and all of that. So just plan, you know, whether you're planning your flights or I am, I'm not going to put you on a flight that I wouldn't do myself or take a parent on. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to run through an airline or through an airport. So pay attention to what you're planning and what you're scheduling and be, be realistic too. If you're, I've got clients right now who are looking at Rome and they're looking at doing very different things in different parts of Rome. And so you have to make sure, okay, you're going to need 30 minutes to get from one to the other. You're not next door. So Mm -hmm. give yourself time to get, get around. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And 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 also when you get places, you find something completely new and unknown, like, Ooh, I want to go in here. It could be anything. It could be just an art gallery you saw. Mm -hmm. And it's Mm -hmm. like, Oh, I want time to go in there. Some, something just connects with you. Give yourself time to do that. Right. If you booked every minute, you, you just won't have time to do that. So, um, Leave yeah. some gaps for sure. If it's really hyper important to you that you visit the Vatican or whatever, pre-book, pre-book, sk- skip the line, things like that. But don't try to plan every minute of every single day. I think that that, that can be a really dangerous place to to lead to mm-hmm. burnout for sure. Okay. Now, what about jet lag? I've heard so many different things like, you know, being exhausted and um, yeah, that just... Even having to get a rental car, having to do this and that, like to a, it gets to a point, you know, you get to a new country, you know, depending, I mean, especially I have friends who just even second guess, do I really want to go over to Africa because the flight is so long 
and tedious. Right. And I'm going, well, can't you stop halfway and do something fun and then stop somewhere else? I don't know how that works anymore. But, you know, it's like, I don't know, just maybe, you know, I had one friend's a couple of friends they went overseas and before their cruise before everything and a friend also who just did this in in she went to um, peru and before she went up into machu picchu she stayed in cusco for a few days to get acclimated, yeah, acclimated. with the at the elevation but mm -hmm. stayed somewhere just for a couple of days just to let's just relax before we go crazy <laughs> you know right I mean? right and and that you know it will cost you a little extra money and time to do that but it is so smart and i was i'm working on a, a like a two week hawaii trip for a family right now where they're coming from ohio and they want to spend a couple of nights in san francisco first and so nice. it'll really be booked as two separate trips for them which makes so much sense so they'll get to enjoy san francisco and then we'll book them from san francisco to hawaii um four islands and then when they come back they'll spend a night in san francisco before flying back home so it'll help break up their jet lag a little bit, but also not, you know, when you're flying from Columbus, Ohio to Honolulu, you're going to have several stops along the way. So it also gives them a little buffer in that if something goes wrong, they may not, you know, they shouldn't be delayed a day. So it'll, it'll work out better. It's costing them a little extra money that that is mm -hmm. for sure. But when you can do that, I highly recommend it, especially when you're going overseas. I mean, Hawaii is, you know, Hawaii is Hawaii, but um, if you're going to Africa or to Europe and things, if if you are sensitive to jet lag, can you can you overnight in New York, um, something like that, and and give yourself a day or two there? Again, it it will add to your cost and your time, but it'll certainly ease the the sting of jet lag. I for jet lag, I do well when I arrive because as soon as I board my plane, I I change my watch to the local time, and so if it's eleven at night in London. Um, I'm going to force myself to go to sleep as as quickly as I can. So get a little bit of rest and just start thinking that resist the urge to think back. But at home in Texas, it, it's really, you know, six o'clock or whatever. And so just pay just just pretend you're on local time. When you arrive, stay awake as long as you can. You cannot if you can get in your hotel room, do not lay down for a nap because you'll wake up at nine or 10 p.m. and go, oh, no, my first day is gone. And now I'm hungry and things are closed and I have no, you know, I'm eating protein bars from the bottom of my backpack. And so that's a, that's a terrible idea. If you can, you know, if you can just manage to stay awake until 7 PM and go to sleep, sleep hard, you will be adjusted the next day. Okay. Coming home can be a, be a little more challenging because you have to really, you know, I mean, and you want to do the same thing is try to get yourself on the schedule as much as possible. For a week or two after I travel internationally, I wake up at 3 a.m. and then I'm awake. And that's rough. That, you know, well, I've come on words with friends, but it's rough. So well, the thing I've seen is people travel, come home, and if they have any delays, you and you're like, you know, maybe they're arriving on a Sunday and they have to be at work, like at the office, first thing Monday morning. And I'm like, I don't know if it's now that I'm hitting those ages, <laughs> I've aged a bit, but in my twenties, <laughs> heck yeah, I could be up till I could go. I could, not anymore. Apparently something changed in my body, but, but mm -hmm. honestly, give yourself that day. Like, right. you know, typically, you know, we'll get to a new destination and I don't book zoom meetings, anything, cause anything can change for us in our schedule. Right. And of course, here we are doing one today, <laughs> but right, of course. So try not to, don't, I just, it's so much easier if you give yourself a day at home without work or any right. major appointment, because you could be delayed anyway. Absolutely. And you want to come home. You want to kind of be slow, let your body acclimate, get your groceries delivered. It's easier, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Speaking of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So those kind of things really help, right. To kind of give yourself a day to adjust so that when Absolutely. you go to work, you're not partially there because right. you want to be productive at work or whatever. You might be retired and, you know, don't you don't necessarily have to have your next gathering of friends that day where you're right. like, hey, listen, I'm actually falling asleep at the table. I know I can't I can't be company to you, but I do. I do encourage that when people are doing a multi week, you know, I've, I've got a young man who's going to Ireland in a, in a week or so. And, you know, you think about, okay, when is he going to come home? And then I backtrack from there because I want him to come home on a Friday or a Saturday. And so that way that gives him, he has to be back at work on Monday. So that works out well 
for, for a lot of people to have Sunday and maybe they'll get up and go to church and come home and take a nap, but they, you know, I mean, they can get things done and have a low key day and feel ready to start the week. Mm -hmm. Um, but they still may, they may struggle in the evenings and be ready for bed by, by the time they get off of work. But again, it's, it's one of those fake it till you make it just, you know, quit saying, okay, now what time is it in Ireland? Don't, you can't think that way. You have to say I'm in Texas and it is this time. I think that's such a huge and, thing. Cause yeah. you know, no matter where I go, I wake mm -hmm. up at 4am and I have <laughs> never understood why that is. I wake up at four yeah. and sometimes I answer, sometimes people get emails really weird times from me, but I, and I used to go, you can't do that. And I'm like, I don't care. Whenever I have that moment, I'm, I'm sending it. I don't care. We're in a different world now, you know, do what you need to do. You know, so um, time management is such a crucial thing because I think if you manage your time, you really are doing those steps to not burn out, you know? So yeah. we don't have to go, go, go. But I don't know. When mm -hmm. I'm in France, I'm going to the Louvre. <laughs> well, and you could spend a year at the Louvre and still not see it all. But, um, but oh, mm -hmm. I've had clients recently, you know, do a private tour through the Louvre. And you go in and you see highlights and you're, you're with, you can do private with just your group. And or do a small group with maybe 10 or 12 people. And oh, the, it's it's phenomenal because you're kind of run, you know, right through and and you jump through and you see see the really some big things in there. So that's that's the way to do the Louvre. Oh, but, see, that's a th that this is where we talk about the importance of travel advisors, because, you know, those things, whereas like if you go to see the Louvre on your own, you could end up, you know, your whole trip to Paris there. <laughs> right. Well, you really could. You will save money. I mean, and so sometimes the the price is the bottom line for for some people, and I understand that. So you'll save a lot of money because you know you'll you'll spend thirty euros to get in for the day. But if you you will need to do your own research and find out what is there and what you want to see. Where if you if you want to trust someone else who does it all the time and they'll tell you history behind pieces and how to tell the difference between you know Roman and Greek statues and you know, so you do learn a lot. It's, I feel like it's worth paying the extra and mm. going in and doing a guided tour. And, and I've seen the highlights that I would not have found on my own without a ton of research. Now I do have people tell me, I, I had a gentleman tell me this morning, I love researching and, and doing my own thing. And I said, great that, you know, you come work in the travel industry. There's work for everyone. But for people who really don't want to do it and they, you know, I also have them call me and go, here's my credit card, just book it. Um, we do a little more between those things, but, um, yeah, there, you know, there find a travel advisor who specializes in the area of where you're going and, and take full advantage of that. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that, that we have to offer people who don't want to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And more and more people are tired of doing it themselves. We do everything else ourselves. So they don't want to do travel themselves too. So, well, no, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it, it gets to that prioritizing in your life. So you have a happier life. We're back to that joy factor. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like have people that help you on things that you don't want to do all the time. So you can go do what you want to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the traits of successful people, no matter mm -hmm. how you look at it. And I'm sorry, but even, you know, we, we talk about vacation, we're talking about busy people at work and careers, but you know, half the people, majority of the retirees I know, have mm -hmm. a very busy life. They go, I don't know how I did anything when I, yeah. they're busy and right. they have their, their, they're happy and you want to have a successful retirement. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. And a exactly. happy retirement. You know, if yes. you're sitting in front of the TV, all your retirement, you're not going to be happy. <laughs> not with what's going on right now. That's not a fun retirement. Well, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm off the TV, the social media, all of it. I, yeah, I, I don't need any other distractions in life. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking to see really what causes stress and television causes stress to me. And it doesn't mean that I'm totally uninformed, but right. I cannot sit there and watch news all day. Like some people thrive on to me that that's discouraging and stressful. So, um, Social media has a become a source place. of stress. And so I got rid of it. It's just off of my phone and I can access it if I want on a computer, but I don't really miss it. Instead, I've started reading a, a book that a friend wrote. And, you know, like I said, I'm going back to the sewing sewing room and doing it. But this is fun. what you said about the book. You know, that's something where, you know, we look at airport travel, bus travel, that kind of thing. It, mm -hmm. It's so relaxing to not be the driver sometimes. And, but I love to drive, you know, that's just my thing. Yeah. But to kind of have that where you can just look out the window or train travel, you know, cruising, mm -hmm. 
and to take those books that maybe you never got through War and Peace, you know, and you always wanted to read it, take it with you. It's good. You're going to need a thicker Kindle. Just kidding. (laughs) But, you know, go through those, those classics, or if there's a movie you haven't seen, you can do those things that you've been putting off that you can do on an airplane or something. Exactly. Exactly. And I've, yeah. I've already downloaded a movie for a flight that I'm taking in a couple of weeks. And I think just how nice to have a couple of hours that I don't want to pay for airline Wi-Fi and sit and work that I look at it as a, a break from work. And I think, oh, I've got a movie queued up or I may take my book if I haven't finished it. Are but you allowed to take your own popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> you can actually. So. Okay, um, wait a minute. This is getting love better. Popcorn, though, so, yeah, you know, whatever. Okay, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll go. take some Red Hots. <laughs> Here we go. You know, who's got the Red Hots and everyone. Can... Off, yeah, I know. I know, right? I, I think I've still got some gummy bears in the car, but I'll restrain. <laughs> they probably yeah. melted. No, I threw away the rest of the Red Hots. Like, okay, come on. No. Y'all have to go out. <laughs> I can't, I'll I can't let you know it. if the gummy bears melted in the car. Then you were... <laughs> I, I already know the answer to that. They they will be melted. So gummy bear soup. <laughs> yes, yum. So, oh, always yeah, fun chatting with you, uh, Cheryl. You yeah, you got me hungry, and I want like something naughty. But you know, it's all good. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a this great conversation because really, it, time is everything. Time yes. is priceless, and so do the best you can with what every second we all have. Exactly. However that looks for you. So thanks for your time. Thank you, everyone. Hey, want to go talk com is the website. Go check out Cheryl's blog has great tips on there. And um, of course, keep up up with us at bigblendradio.com. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you. Talk soon. Thank you for listening to Big Blend Radio's Vacation Station Travel and Leisure Show brought to you by Big Blend Magazines. Keep up with us at bigblendradio.com or blendradioandtv.com. Happy travels!